Diving right in. <laughs> All righty. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to the paraprofessional section 2016 spring meeting. Our theme is the future. If you don't know me, I'm Sarah Nelson, the paraprofessional section chair. To every single one of you attending this meeting, thank you. We are so glad you're here. If you're not a member of the Paras, we'd love it if you'd consider becoming a member. But if you can't, we're so grateful that you've decided to join us today. We have 50 attendees who are scattered all over the state of Nebraska from places such as Seward, Norfolk, Sydney, Hastings, and Lincoln. And we have a few attending at their desks. <coughs> Excuse me. We're all here because of our passion for library work. I'd also like to thank Christine Woods. She's waiting in the back for all her hard work setting up this spring meeting. Thank you, Christine. If you're watching with multiple people on the same computer, would you please type everyone's names into the chat box so that we can make sure that everyone gets their CE credit? We've got three great sessions today, so I hope you all enjoy it and that you learn something you can use on the job. There will be five, ten minute breaks between the speakers. And now, starting off our program is Michael Sowers, Director of Technology at DoSpace. The session is called DoSpace, a one of a kind concept. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for the wonderful introduction and thank you for all the attendees and it's so nice to, to uh, be able to catch up with some folks I haven't seen in a while. Um, so as some of you know, I used to be with the Nebraska Library Commission and as of just about a year ago, I left that position and left training as something I've been doing for the last 20 years to kind of take everything I learned and more or less put my money where my mouth is. And instead of spending my life telling people how they should be running their libraries and their computers, I decided that I wanted to participate in this thing called Do Space. So from a visuals perspective, basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of run a slideshow here of um, stuff that has gone on in Do Space and things that are uh, happening there. And then I'm just going to kind of talk about Do Space. Maybe mention specifics as if a particular slide is up, but um, talk about what this project is, what we do there, what is the mission behind this, and, and then open it up for questions because uh, as we've learned very quickly over the last couple of months that we've been open and even before that, everybody has lots of questions about what this, this thing called DoSpace is. So first kind of the why of DoSpace and a little bit of the history. Um, the concept itself started with Gary Boston, the former director of OPL. And when he came into Omaha, he started asking himself and other people what might possibly be the future of the library. Um, he didn't necessarily have an answer. He was just trying to figure out what, what that might be. So he uh, hooked up with a woman by the name of Sue Morris, who's the president of Heritage Services in Omaha. Heritage Services is a philanthropic nonprofit organization that raises money for community beneficial projects in Omaha. Uh, they raise money for the Durham Museum, they raise money for the new hockey arena on campus. They, they've been around for decades. And they're uh, an organization I've never heard of before. And, and I found in Omaha you've either heard of them or you haven't. It's just they're just there and available. And so Sue and Gary started traveling around the country looking at what other libraries were doing that were different. Um, they looked at what we might call digital libraries, they looked at um, maker spaces, they looked at co-working spaces, and they said, well, we need to do something like this in Omaha. We, uh, and so Heritage Services did the fundraising. They bought the former Borders building at 72nd and Dodge in Omaha. It is the single busiest intersection in the state. Uh, there is uh, something like nine lanes of traffic uh, in each of the two major directions. Uh, it's a transit hub, and if not geographically, it's at least considered kind of the center of Omaha if you break Omaha up into kind of north, south, east, and west. They gutted it. If you haven't been there, if you remember it as a borders, the only thing that was standing once, once construction got in there was the stairs and the elevator. Uh, 
uh, everything else was taken down to the studs, and, and some of the studs were removed. <laughs> uh, and construction uh, went on for about a year. I was hired in May of last year, so we have Rebecca Stavick, our executive director, and then there's me as director of technology and a director of community learning, and an operations manager. We were all, the four of the team was kind of built last summer, and we spent the summer in uh, temporary offices uh, up by Whole Foods at, at, uh, and on Dodge Street. And uh, my, my desk for the summer was in a hallway next to the printers. <laughs> this was, when I say temporary office space, I'm not kidding. And we kind of planned what this was going to be. Um, the technology was kind of already picked, but we had to decide how to implement it. We just had to decide how to circulate it. We had to decide how people could use it. We had to decide how many staff we were going to have. We had to budget. We had, I mean, it just things I had never done before. <laughs> uh, to say my life has changed in the last year would be, would be an understatement. And so ultimately, and one of the things I kept saying all summer, which has turned out to be very true, is that we spent all summer planning this space. Then I said we're going to open the doors and actually let the public in. Then we're really going to find out how this place runs. Because we can make a lot of assumptions about what people want to do with this technology. It is very much modeled on the library, uh, how libraries work, how public libraries work, library ethos, privacy, security, all of that stuff. But then we're just going to let everybody in. And because what we're trying to answer, other than maybe what is the future of libraries, what we're trying to answer is, is what happens to a community when you offer this level of access and technology for free. Right? So as uh, we are a privately funded nonprofit uh, that runs us called Community Information Trust, DoSpace is the only one in existence. There are some things other places do. There are things we do that uh, that are, are sort of similar to other places, but nobody quite does it like we do. Um, <clears throat> so access and uh, education are kind of our, our two larger goals. And I'm you can kind of think of me as the head of technology as the access part of it, and then our uh, director of community learning is the access end of it. So I'm a little better talking about the technology, but I'll definitely talk about the education too. We are up at 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. seven days a week. We are only closed for six holidays a year. Membership is completely free. In fact, there's a stack of membership cards up here on the desk. You are welcome to grab one of those, or you can sign up for membership right online. You do need to register your card online if you do that or come on in. Um, because we are privately funded, we're not uh, restricted to a taxpayer base for who can become a member. So if you are visiting from out of town and you want to come in and use DoSpace, Come on in, we'll get your membership, take five minutes tops, uh, and you'll be good to go. We have, so now kind of doing the visual, the, the non-visual tour of the space, um, we have 56 public access computers, uh, ranging from about 60-40 split between Macs and PCs, PCs being the 40. Uh, on the PC side of things, we have touchscreen PCs, we have accessible PCs with, with additional hardware and software on them for people with disabilities. We have kind of low-end, medium-end, and high-end PCs. Some of those high-end PCs are dual-screen setups. Uh, I'll get back to the software in a moment. On the Macs, we have both iMacs and Mac Minis. Uh, if you are a Mac person and want to get your hands on a 5K 27-inch iMac, we got a couple of those floating around that you can play with on that. Uh, on those uh, Max and PCs, we have uh, software ranging from Office to the full Adobe Creative Suite to AutoCAD and other 3D design software. And we are uh, constantly having people request of, of, of us other software uh, that we might install. And so that's part of my job is deciding what are we going to install, is it free, do we have to pay for it, what are the licensing restrictions, things like that. Um, all those machines are set up for uh, an hour use at a time. We, we have uh, software to control logging in with the membership card. Um, at this point, um, the reservation system will give you an hour, and if there's enough time, you can get an additional hour. It's kind of standard. Most libraries have something like this these days. Um, on top of that, we have uh, MacBook Airs that you can check out in the space. We have Dell laptops, uh, Windows laptops you can check out in the space. We have Chromebooks you can check out in this space. We have uh, iPad Airs you can check out. Uh, and then uh, we also have um, uh, 80 Kindle Fire HDs that you can also check out uh, 
also in the space. And that's just kind of the simple, you need a computer. Uh, we have uh, a full gigabit in Ethernet uh, fiber connection into the building and open Wi-Fi. And this, by the way, is all just on the first floor. We'll talk about the second <laughs> floor in a minute. That's, 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 that's Metro Community College upstairs. Um, we uh, have um, what we call tech kits. And some of these things you're seeing, the Makey Makey that's on the screen right now, uh, we have uh, tech kits that we put together, which are kits of uh, different pieces of technology in these plastic bins you can see on the, on the picture right now that kids and adults can check out in the space. So we have Makey Makeys, we have different robots. Uh, we, uh, I think the kid's making a, a Play-Doh piano at the moment with that. Um, so we're, we're constantly adding new uh, technologies that people can check out in the space and play with. That's the egg bot that this woman is playing with that will take illustrations uh, from a program and then use a Sharpie marker and draw your illustration on a rounded object. Hence the wow. egg, an egg bot. Um, we have a teen hangout. Uh, that screen there is uh, four 55-inch uh, HD displays with four Xbox Ones and four PS fours hooked up to them, so you can play four different games at a time or one game on a 110-inch uh, HD display. And yes, kids do also their homework in there and whatnot. Uh, we have what we call Little's Lab, which is our uh, little kids' room. Uh, that has one of those AWE uh, workstations in it. It also has a, another 55-inch touchscreen PC hooked up, mounted on the wall at toddler height. <laughs> so uh, Emily's uh, son has come in and gets to play his iPad games, but on you know a screen that's you know almost 60 inches wide <laughs> on that. Um, and we do kind of an interactive uh, digital story time in there and do programs for uh, parents about how to work with technology with their kids. And in fact, there's Felicity are doing a, doing a story time. Yes, we do have some books in the little now. We have, we have HTML for babies. It's a boy book. It's never too early to teach them. Uh, do a web page. Um, and then uh, this gentleman here is in our 3D lab. We usually, when we do a physical tour, we, we stop at the 3D lab. We end there because if we started there, nobody would ever want to leave. <laughs> Um, in the 3D lab, we have three uh, 3D printers. We have a, a TAS-5 that is a, a kind of a desktop model, and that is bookable. Uh, you can book up to two hours at a time on that and use yourself, completely free to use. Um, let me just stress here, this is all completely free to use. As long as you remember, we just charge for paper and plastic. That, that's it. Um, then we have two other 3D printers, a, a what's called a U-Print SE and a Dimension 1200ES. Those are industrial level 3D printers. You are not going to find another one that's public access in the state of either of those. In those cases, what we do is, uh, there's something that was printed on one of them. Uh, you submit your files to us. We put them in a queue. We will get those printed for you, and then we just charge you for the materials. Uh, we're not looking to make a profit off of that. If you want to do it yourself, then you can book time on the task. Also in the 3D lab, we have a laser cutter and etcher. So you might have seen some wooden and glass things going by in the slideshow. Uh, this will cut in or etch everything from wood to acrylic to uh, rubber if you want to make rubber stamps, uh, to glass, marble, metals. Um, so you can get creative. There was a, I saw the chess set go by a little bit earlier. That was done with a laser cutter up on the table in front of me here. We have a puzzle one of our uh, volunteers made. Um, and then we also, we've added recently a vinyl cutter, so if you want to make vinyl stickers, you can just bring in vinyl and, and get those cut in that. That's something we made. We have a Dunkin' Donuts in our too. <laughs> did I mention that? Uh, <laughs> so if you need the caffeine and the sugar, you're all good. We got you, we got you completely covered. Uh, there's some kids working with straws and, and uh, developing, a, a, I think it was a bridge uh, project they were trying to get support going on on that. Um, so uh, one other thing that went by I saw was we have what are called double telepresence robots. So you can check those out or you can book them for a meeting. And so you can get on your computer. Your face will show up on the iPad in the robot. And you get to drive the robot around the building or attend the meeting. And then there's a camera on the iPad in the robot so you can see what's going on in the room. I should have maybe brought one. That would be, <laughs> one day we'll do a presentation to be on double robot. I think that, that, that might be kind of interesting. Uh, here's a thermos that a medical student etched uh, different types of heartbeats onto his uh, thermos yeah. there using our laser cutter. So you could like, basically study heart rhythms while he's drinking his coffee. <laughs> um, we did a light painting workshop. I saw some of you were kind of moving on, some of these pictures going by. Um, 
So, like I said, we have a, a full educational program. I have some flyers on front of the table here of, of uh, just a sample of our uh, what's available. We do different kinds of programming. We have a, a youth category. We have what we call lifestyle uh, category, crash courses. So it's like here's an introduction to Word, PowerPoint. In fact, we have someone in the audience who's actually taught one of those PowerPoint classes for us. Um, we do resume workshops. We will do introduction to PHP classes. We will, um, yesterday, our, um, I think it was a junior hackers group used the new Lego WeDo uh, construction kits and built robots that you would program using a language called Scratch. So you bring up a laptop with the software, it communicates via Bluetooth to the Lego, and then you get your robot to, to solve a problem. Oh, um, so yeah, so our educational program, we really want to stress not just sitting down, attending a presentation, and hope you learn something. They, we really try to make them as hands-on as possible so that kids really do learn something. Uh, the slide up here, we also have meeting spaces available. Um, we have two conference rooms and uh, then a meeting room, a large meeting room that divides in half. These rooms are available for booking by the general public, nonprofits, community organizations for free. There's an application process that you know we approve. Uh, if you're just a study group and you want a room, we can do that for you. Uh, if you are a private organization, uh, want a private meeting where the public is not allowed to come, there is a nominal fee charge for that, but we do charge very competitively with, with uh, other places you can rent in the area. Our meeting rooms have either uh, 70 or 80 inch touchscreen PCs in them mounted on the wall or high def projection from the ceiling so that uh, if you want to connect anything from your iPod touch to an HDMI device, uh, we can connect you via a wire or wireless in one frame form or another. So basically bring it in, we'll figure out how to connect it for you and you can get that going. Um, so coming up here, one of the programs I do want to highlight is our Senior Cyber Society. So we have um, uh, 18 paid staff from the executive director uh, down to our, our staff under me and the education coordinator and our membership folks up front kind of running the front desk and greeting people. Uh, then we have a cadre of just over 200 volunteers uh, available to us right now. We're always looking for more. There's volunteer information on the website and on a flyer uh, on the table in front of me. Um, and those volunteers range from uh, just uh, what we call advocates, which are people who are just kind of standing inside the front door and welcoming people and answering the question, what is do space and can I show you around, uh, to our uh, people who uh, teach actual workshops. Uh, to people who help on our tech help desk, uh, which is what my staff mostly runs, uh, to uh, we have a mentor program. So uh, one of those kind of long-term problems you have when you're doing public service and trying to answer questions for people is how long do you spend with a particular individual trying to answer the question? Okay. We've got high-end software in this place. I, I couldn't begin to tell you how AutoCAD works. I know what it does. <laughs> but I'm not going to be able to help you, nor do we have any other AutoCAD experts on, uh, on staff. And poor AutoCAD, we pick on it so much <laughs> because it's kind of the most complicated software we, we offer access to. But we have uh, a cadre of people we call mentors. So we will kind of help you out. We will get you started. We want to encourage you to learn on your own. But if you really need somebody to sit down with you for an hour or two, you can fill out a form on our website. We will then match you up with one of our mentors, and then between you and the mentor, you make an appointment, and you sit down, and they will come in, and they will sit down with you and help you out, whether it's on our equipment or on your equipment. And we have a pretty good success rate with that. We've got a, a long list of stuff that people are willing to just come in and help other people with in DSpace. Um, so we're always looking for more. <laughs> I will stress that. We could not run this place without our volunteer. Uh, I mean, I, I can't stretch that more than enough. These are some pictures from grand opening. I think we're going to start cycling through in a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, do space in and of itself is is a giant experiment, as I mentioned. Um, we're trying to answer these questions of what happens when you know people have this level of technology. Forgot to finish the story about cyber seniors. Cyber seniors meets every Wednesday morning from 9 a.m. to noon. It is run by senior volunteers and one staff person who's kind of in charge of the whole program. 
And it's basically, you're a senior, you need to come in, and you just need help with your stuff. You know, you, you got an iPad for Christmas that your kids gave you, and then they went back home and you explained <laughs> how to use it. Sound familiar? Um, you know, you got a new cell phone. Um, you know, you need to sign up for email, something like that. And it's just kind of this open lab where folks come in, we do ask them to register first just so we can do some crowd control, and they can help. And that's it. And uh, we were averaging about 30 or 35 people a week. Uh, and then two weeks ago, it was in the uh, Omaha World Herald. And last week, we had over 75 people show up. Oh. Just tell you who reads the newspaper stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, that, was, that was the best marketing we probably could have ever had, was that article. Uh, this week, we had well over 50. We had a little more crowd control, but people showed up. They're like, what? You know, and they needed it, so they, they used it. Um, and that is uh, that is probably I would say one of our biggest successes, at least from a kind of a program and events standpoint. The stories that we're collecting out of DSpace are just amazing. Um, the things people are doing in DSpace, I, I just I can't predict from one day to the next how people are going to use our technology. Uh, we've had a gentleman come in a couple of times with a, a full size digital keyboard, hook it up one of the Macs load up GarageBand, put on his headset, and make music and record it right on to our computers. Um, we do have a, a 3D scanner. It's called an iSense. It's an okay scanner. It'll do your head quite well. But if you're really fine detail, this is, this is not the tool yet. We're, we're working on that. But uh, uh, some kids discovered they could do that, so they're scanning each other's heads and they're printing out little busts of themselves. <laughs> and, but we had one gentleman come in one day somewhere around 75, 80, an older gentleman, and he's like, I, I heard you can like, like scan my head and, and print, print a bust of me. We're like, well, yeah, I mean, you know, we're just like, well, you know, why, why do you want to do this? You know, we'll happily help you out. He's like, well, I fly RC planes, and he wants to put himself as the pilot. <laughs> <in> the <airplane." laughs> and I'm just like, that's spectacular. I, I, I never could have guessed. Um, we have folks who are trying to start their own small businesses who will come in and prototype using our equipment. Uh, we have a gentleman who, they, uh, he and a buddy want to start a, a custom engraving company uh, and need to, um, they, they will buy their own laser cutter. We, we, we do ask that you're not using our space to actually you know, make your business. But they need to kind of learn how the equipment works and figure out if they want to invest in it and create some samples. And so they're doing that using our equipment. Okay. And in that case, they can book up to two hours a day, first come, first serve. They're bringing in all the materials. There's no touch. Okay. Um, we do have some folks who are basically in 8 to 12 hours a day um, because this is now their co-working space. Okay. Instead of paying a company to go get a desk somewhere over in an office building, they come in and use our equipment. Now, at the moment, we've got enough computer capacity to people using that they can spend 6, 8, 12 hours on our computers. Come summer, we're starting to warn them uh, it's going to be a little tighter. <laughs> we, we are really trying to figure out what's going to happen this summer. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Mm. So, jeez, uh, oh, what else do I want to say? Here's, here's Felicity doing uh, another uh, uh, for a group of uh, Girl Scouts and uh, with uh, little robots called Dash and Dot that will teach you how to program and then you can drive them around using an iPad and instruct them on how to do things. We love the common cards that we get from people. Um, like I said, we're just collecting those stories as much as we can. Um, briefly, so there's, there's those 56 computers off to the right there. Um, briefly upstairs is uh, MCC, Metropolitan Community College. Uh, some of the things, some of the photos that have gone by have been upstairs. Uh, they will be doing a lot of continuing education type of classes up there. They kind of have a very open classroom situation. They're, the upstairs, when they're open, is completely open to the public. Right now, when people ask where's a quiet place to go, we typically tell them to go upstairs because there's no students up there yet. Um, but uh, as the spring comes up, they will be doing more and more classes and workshops. Uh, they did uh, last month a Science on the Sphere, which was a two-week exhibit. It's this giant sphere with projectors, and you can control it with an iPad and get like weather data and satellite data and see the history of the Earth and things like that. Oh, during our grand opening, we did do a uh, high-altitude balloon launch. So this is this is pictures coming. Um, 
that, that came back and that we were able to track the balloon live uh, in the space uh -huh. as that was going up. That was a, in conjunction with UNO uh, on that. Uh, um, and so with, with partnering with Metro, uh, or excuse me, MCC, Metro's the bus people, yeah. uh, with MCC, uh, they're going to be paying attention to what we're doing downstairs and offering, you know, kind of longer and additional classes like Microsoft certification, that sort of stuff upstairs. Uh, we'll be paying attention to what they're doing upstairs so we have kind of the resources to support their students downstairs and people who want to do that. So we'll start looking at what software they're teaching and maybe make that available downstairs. So that's going to be just a very interesting long-term partnership with them and kind of working um, uh, back and forth. And I do know, too, once they really get up and going, uh, our door count's going to go, just, just instantly go up. So that's one thing I have to track every day is our door count. So uh, I'm, I'm very aware of those numbers. Um, there's, a, yeah, there's one kid scanning her brother with a 3D scanner. And walk around there. Um, we are, I'll just kind of wrap up and open it up for questions. One thing we're trying to do is we're trying to be very responsive to the community. So that whole, once we let people in and find out how it really works, that's where it kind of comes back uh, on, on me and on us. In that um, people are asking for things. And they're saying, you know, well, um, you know, there's this whole group in this community who works with this kind of software. Maybe you need to have that uh, available. Uh, this, this was our outdoor sign countdown. So I, I think we're, we're, we're going through these. Um, uh, uh, hardware. So we did not open with a flatbed. Uh, scanner for people to scan photographs. We, we just didn't. Didn't think of it. Well, we have one now. <laughs> and we have a couple of people who have figured out we have one now. And they're in every day and they bring a stack of photos and they get it for two hours and she's scanning her photos and, and, and going through. So um, it's just we're, we're adjusting the technology as much as we can. We like to say, you know, uh, I, I mentioned that we don't have, the, we're not using our full capacity on the public computers right now. Well, maybe if in six months we figure out we never have, well, maybe we'll pull out some computers and put in something else. You know, uh, when we opened, we only had the two 3D printers, and people were going, "Look, we want one we can play with directly, not just look at and you print for us." So we got the tags, and now we have that. So we're constantly trying to adjust. Uh, yeah, somebody made us do space cupcakes with. Oh. <laughs> Um, yeah. Um, one other thing I'll mention, I know, did, did a picture of a brain go by at yeah. some point? Yeah. So that was a, a, a medical instructor on a campus somewhere, and he, it was a life-size brain, uh, somewhat atrophied, however, so it was not as, as solid as a normal brain, I guess. Uh, that was an 86-hour long 3D print we did over Christmas. Oh, he brought in a real brain? No, 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 no. He, <laughs> oh, he, 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 he found the model file. Okay. We printed it. Uh, I will say, 3D printing, it's kind of like watching paint dry. It's interesting for about five minutes, and then it's just like, oh, look, it's a nozzle going back and forth. And <laughs> layers. Eh. Um, so, uh, yeah, but that, that's our, that was our single biggest prank we've done so far. Luckily, it worked all the way through. We didn't have to restart it. it just, we, we, we left it over Christmas as we were closed, and we're coming back. We're like, please work, please work, and it did. So, uh, uh -huh. you know, when you get industrial level printers, they're a lot more reliable than your own stuff. I'll tell you that. So, um, Anyway, so um, I could not have dreamed of doing what I'm doing right now a year ago, even when I took the job. Um, as those of you who know me know that I used to talk to people a lot, and this is the third presentation I've done in a year. I just, you know, my, my life has completely changed. That's Elvin. Elvin is, is amazing. He was actually at our outside side the other day. Um, he's an artist around town. Some people see me downtown and things like that. So anyways, yeah, I think we're kind of cycling back through our, our photos here. So actually, my timing worked pretty well. But um, so yeah, um, I am I am really committed to this project. I, I think it's, um, I don't know where we're going to end up in a couple of years. Um, none of us do, really. Um, but um, if I wasn't as committed to this project as I was, I wouldn't be commuting from Lincoln at five days a week <laughs> also. So you know, my, my gas bill's gone up just a little bit. Um, yeah, this this bear. I will end with this bear. Uh, this was a bear that got left at New Space. So uh, we gave him a little tour. We gave him a card and everything. And so there he's playing with our BB-8 and the 3D printers. And actually, this is the single most successful uh, social media we've done so far. It, was, it went nuts. And we did actually find the people through Facebook that we left the bear behind. 
So, uh, but yeah, Ted E. Bear now has an account with the space. There, so uh, yeah, there's Dash and Dash. So, um, so yeah, okay. So that's that's about uh, a little more than half of my time. And as we have learned over the last year, everybody has lots of questions. So I would at this point just like to open it up. And, and what do you what do you want to know about new space? And somehow I think we're going to answer remote questions too. I don't know if Krista's controlling that or what. But what do you want to know? I yes. Uh -huh, sir. Yeah. What are some of New Space's current goals at the moment, or goal if you work towards <coughs> one? Is there some specific thing you New Space is trying to reach this year? Goals. Um, we're actually actively putting those together <laughs> <laughs> as as we speak. Oh, okay, good. We have a to go around. So the question was, what, what are our goals for this year? Um, they're very, I'm, I'm going to be a little nebulous in this answer at the moment because we're actively trying to put those together. Um, but serving a diverse community, we're, we're trying to reach everybody. Um, so we are looking very much at uh, our demographics and our statistics a lot. I'm learning more statistics right now than I care to think about uh, some days. Um, so that, um, for example, on the registration form, we do ask for your zip code. So we can kind of make some generalizations from that. We do ask some demographic questions. Those are completely optional. But we want to make sure that this project is reaching the people who really do need it, uh, if nothing else. And then the people who do have a certain level of access to technology, giving them that next level of access, I think, is a big one. So just kind of reaching the diverse population is, is one of our big goals at the moment. Um, we are getting about a thousand new members a month, uh, week. So uh, yeah, we're doing a lot of card signups. <laughs> uh, so, so we are starting to reach them. Um, beyond that, I think just, just being that responsiveness to the community. Um, and one of my goals right now is to survive the summer. <laughs> because we notice when, when, when OPS is like off for, on, a, on a Friday, our numbers go through the roof. It's like, hey, let's all go to new space. Uh, spring break was this week for some schools. Uh, we've noticed a, a de definite uptick in, in, in the gate count, too. So yeah, um, yeah, I can't wait for summer. <laughs> um, but yeah, ultimately, it's and like I said, it's kind of we're, we're in this experiment. So we're, we're trying to, um, we are setting up those goals, but we haven't really solidified them yet. Yes, Jake. I don't actually don't think this is on. I hope it's still on. But now, hello. Okay, I'll repeat the question. Okay. Oh, oh, there we go. There, now it's working. Um, uh, Caitlin uh, Lombardo actually works for you guys, and yep. she works at, here at uh, Bell University as a part-time right. uh, circulation assistant. So that's fantastic. Caitlin is uh, wonderful. Yes. <laughs> no, I keep and then trying to steal. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Go ahead. Anyway, sorry. This <laughs> is. Uh, but uh, she had mentioned that you guys actually circulate um, uh, uh, Raspberry Pis. Yes, yes. Sure yes. That's one of our tech kits. Yes. Um, now, does that actually does that or any other technology actually leave the doors? No. Okay. Everything like everything is in the space. Yeah. Um, so, um, for example, the little bits kits that it's right on the screen here. Uh, everything is for use in the building. Okay. Um, we uh, really the only thing you can do with a membership outside of the building is we do have an overdrive collection mm. uh, of tech and STEM related material, not like popular fiction, but just kind of related to what we do. Right. Um, but yeah, everything else is really to encourage people to use the space and collaborate in the space and work with each other in the space. Okay. So yeah, no, nothing nothing goes out the door. I was just curious. Sure. Uh, yeah. No. Great question. Any, any technology that's being lent out. I know that there's a lot of uh, like very large metropolitan libraries mm -hmm. that are doing whole wireless lending and stuff like that. And I, I was just curious that if yeah, there was anything. I, to to which I will probably just add, not at this time. We we haven't ruled it out. We just are. You know, uh, part of the goal is to get people to just use do space as a place. Um, and then we're, we're constantly reevaluating things like that, so maybe we will eventually, uh, but just not at this time. Oh, 
Oh, I, I don't want to. Those make me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll repeat um, your question. I always end up talking too loud. This. Um, I kept seeing pictures of the violin. Oh, was, the violin. Was that something that was made with the 3D printer yes. and it actually worked? So, so that is called Hovelin. Um, a, a, a couple whose first names escape me, but their last name is Hova. They are from Omaha. They now live in San Francisco. Uh, she is a, a spectacular violinist. Uh, he works for a uh, I can't remember the company, but a company that writes 3D design software. Uh -huh. And so their project is called the Hovelin. It is a 3D printable violin. You do have to buy the strings and the knobs and whatnot. But between plastic and parts, it costs about hundred dollars. And the idea is, for, from their perspective, more of a um, you know, instruments are expensive, and kids want to try an instrument. And a three perfectly working 3D printed violin for a hundred bucks, maybe a little easier than a cheap three four hundred dollar violin that the kid gives up in six months. Um, so yes, we, we printed one. Uh, they've since come out with a version two that we haven't printed yet. Um, they came and did an event for us, and it is playable. Uh, it sounds great. Nobody on staff actually can play it, but you know. <laughs> uh, and in fact, uh, Kate Hova is her name. Uh, her former violin teacher actually heard we had printed one and came into New Space and tuned it and restrung it for us, and then played it. And you know, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> um, so yeah, so you know, if you stop by, just ask to see the violin, and and we'll, we'll we've got a hanging kind of in a workroom, and we'll, we'll pull it out and let you fiddle with it. But yeah, um, and we we intend to print the new version, but we've got to sneak that in between all the people who want us to print things for them. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, thanks. That's that's um, okay. And actually, if you look up Hovelin, H O V A L I N, um, just Google it. And you can see videos and their process and, and all of that. And, um, yeah, that's a great project. Uh, Michael, we do have some questions from um, our remote viewers. Go for it. Okay. Um, where are we at here? Um, so I want to know if people use the space like a cyber cafe. Is that the kind of idea? Like. Sure. sure. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> they can. <laughs> Why you have the donut shop. Yeah, well, yeah, that's why we have the donut shop. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, you go, yeah. Although we don't put food next to the computers, uh, unless it's a lid on a, you know, coffee with a lid is fine. Uh, the donuts, please. Um, yeah, no, seriously, I mean, people can just come in and uh, we, we have some 15 minute stations where they just want to check their email. Um, people, I mean, I try not to watch what people are doing on the computers because it's really none of my business, but then we also want to know what people are doing on the computers. Uh, but yeah, lots of just yeah. email. Resumes. I mean, so yeah, you you can. That's that's part of what we do. Is kind of that cyber cafe sort of uh, aspect to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do you have um, policies online, or where can people find them as far as printing and what are actually they can and can't do there? There's yes. a website uh, that has it all listed. I guess I is the question. This is Amy Owen from the yeah. Show. So if you go to dospace.org, and I believe that's under the about tab. Um, yeah, most of our policies are listed online. How much things cost. We have a behavior policy, a code of conduct, uh, that sort of thing that, that we do enforce. Um, the, the food policy has changed over the last month or so uh, as, as we just, uh, some food usage was getting a little out of hand, so a little more control over that. We learn, um, but I will say probably as, as the um, audience here works in libraries, um, most of these policies will seem very familiar to you. I mean, the three people who wrote them are all librarians. So uh, we kind of had a, a, a no place to start anyways. Um, so yeah, but uh, all of those that, that most people should be looking for are on our website. Okay, great. Um, another one, since it's such a new idea, how are you marketing and advertising what you can do? I know you talked about their newspaper well, articles, the, the but are you guys doing anything in specific? Um, so we actually have a marketing firm that we're working with. So um, I, I, this is where I have to be a little careful because I know of some things I can't talk about yet. Uh, which, if you know me, that's hard. Yeah. <laughs> um, all summer, I had to like not tell people what was going on. It was, it was a rough summer. Um, so yeah, the, the the marketing firm works with local media, uh, works with the bus system. And actually, if you watch carefully, there is a bus completely wrapped here in Omaha. Uh, that is the new space bus. 
the only picture I have of it is in the parking lot, though. I, I want a, like, on the street, but I passed it once, but I was driving, so it's a little hard. Um, there's bus benches. There are billboards out around Dodge Street and 72nd. Um, so, yeah, there's, there, there is a whole plan. More will be happening. There's kind of a schedule of things that will be going on. So um, that's where I, I you know, the, the benefit of the kind of the private funding, uh, we've got pretty good budgets for all of this. Um, I, I was joking last summer that I'm dealing with more zeros than I'm used to. So, um, yeah, so, that, and so that, that's about as detailed as I can get at this point. But, yeah, there is a complete total marketing plan going on. There. Do you know the name of the firm, the marketing firm, or no? Uh, I think I can say that. Swanson Russell. No. Okay. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah, I, I, that's been out in the papers. So Promotion for them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. So a couple of questions about uh the sewing stuff. I guess there are pictures of sewing into the clothes. What were you doing with that? And what with the yarn? I know those are two different things, but sure. <laughs> some of the more yeah, um, kind of crafty things. Can you talk more about those two? Sure. The yarn. I'm gonna plead actual ignorance on that one. I'm not sure. I, I don't know what that event was. Um, we've done a couple of events that are kind of what we call tech fashion. So uh, sewing in um, LEDs and light strings into clothing and into hats and um, kind of so, and then hooking up a battery and a little pack behind it and, and lighting up your clothing uh, after dark. Um, that's That's been fun. I will tell you, though, that it's, 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 I was amused by the tech fashion one last week because there was like, you know, it's teenagers, and there was like one guy. All the rest were teen girls, and he was having a good time. Uh, you know? um, but yeah, so far it's all still hand sewing. We don't have like sewing machines or anything like that. Yeah, we've, we've talked about it, but um, I think probably if if you look through our events calendar of the website, you can get a few more details about what's going on with those those particular workshops. Cool. And one last thing, um, can you give us an idea about the cost? Someone wants to know how much it costs to do that brain. Oh, how much did the brain cost? So the, um, yeah, what we charge is a number that's not really going to help, which is $3 per cubic inch of filament. Uh, I think the brain was in the neighborhood of about $150, if I recall correctly. So not bad. Um, the chess piece that just went by would be maybe 4 bucks, 5 bucks, something like that. That brain is solid filament. Um, so the brain, I don't think, was solid. I think it was a high-density fill. Um, so for 3D printing, you can do kind of low. You don't have to print it solid. Right. If you print it solid, you're going to use more filament. It's going to cost more. It's going to weigh more. Right. Uh, we have done some solid objects, and you know they 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 do weigh a lot, and you do add that extra cost. Um, the industrial printers print in uh, PLA, which is basically Lego plastic. So. Um, the one you can book yourself prints in a couple dozen different kinds of filament. It's just what do you want to bring in. So. All right. Was, it, was that the remote question, there, Krista? Yeah, that one more just popped up. Um, someone said they saw a picture of a Segway, maybe? Or was there something? Um, I think that was the, yeah, I think that was the double telepresence robot. Oh, OK. Kind of, kind of Segway, but it's, it's an iPad on a stick with some wheels at the bottom. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Um, there's, a, there's a modern family. Or, Modern Family episode and a Big, Big Bang Dang. Theory episode, yes, had, had these in it. So, yeah. Uh, so, Cynthia, you had a question, and then uh, behind you. Well, um, Jan Gracer, um, okay. who's on our board, our hair board, compiled some good questions, and and they were already asked. But you had some a uh, good question about the uh, Google Glasses and a few other things. Oh, I was just curious as if you had like the Oculus Gaming or a Google Pro. <coughs> Um, so the closest we're going to get, which we will make available for checkout in the next couple of weeks, are some Google Cardboard. Okay. So you cool. you plug your phone in and you can do that. Um, we've I've, I've looked at the Oculus. Um, I've looked at the Samsung VR. Uh, I was at CES and actually got to wear one of those in a chair that moved to. So, wow, it was pretty good. Um, I am. Desperately trying to get my hands on a HoloLens from uh, Microsoft. Um, okay. I really want one of those. Uh, ever since I got this job, I'm like, I want one of those. <laughs> um, so you support me, okay? 
<laughs> Some other people support me too. I'm, 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 I'm working the channels. I, I, I can't I can't promise anything, but I, that that is a goal of mine. Is I am going to get my hands on one of those and, and make it available. Uh, and actually, uh, Mona, did you have a you had a question? I have a yes. Question. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I was just wondering on your team events <laughs> and your youth events. Do you have age limitations? Do you have a cutoff that says you can't participate because you're the age? So yeah, it kind of depends on the event. Um, so we have learned that there's some there that are like 12 to 16. And um, so my understanding from talking to staff is some of those, they've had some 11 year olds and just the manual dexterity was just not there yet to be able to do whatever the activity was. Um, and so they, they've kind of had to be a little more tighter controlled on the age limits. But, you know, we really don't want to tell a kid no either. But if, you know, if it's for 12 to 16, you know, an eight-year-old just isn't going to fit in anyways sort of thing. Um, we are, so we had what we called Little's Lab and we had uh, Teen Hackers. We've, and what we kind of lost in there was like 6 to 11 in the middle. So we've created, uh, I think it's, there's Big Little's Lab, and then there's Junior Makers, and we're trying to kind of fill that gap in the middle. Um, and in some cases, the program concepts might be the same as like what the teens are doing, but modified a little bit for the younger crowd. Um, so we're, so that's kind of my non-answer of sometimes we have to, but we don't really want to, just because of experience and, and the, the type of uh, event that it is, it just may not work for a younger individual. I saw a picture of a, a young man with Special Olympics. Yes. Do you let them participate at any age level? Um, so he was actually working in our 3D lab, and he, he did that with the laser cutter, uh, the, the, the plaque that he was holding up. Um, so uh, we, we have had groups uh, of folks with, with disabilities coming in. Um, I don't see why we wouldn't. I'm not sure it honestly has actually specifically come up yet. So that's something we would just decide uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. But we want to be as inclusive as possible. So, um, uh, you know, it would, it would partially be up to the instructor to, mm -hmm. as, in, and as to what the activity is. Would they let an old lady like me do team tech fashion? Um, <laughs> my suggestion would be be a volunteer for it. And because we're always looking for volunteers, and that'll get you in the door. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, okay, we're over here. Uh, my question is about how far in advance, because I'm sitting here thinking there are so many things that you do uh, that I would love to have the kids from my community be uh -huh. introduced to right. that I am never going to be able to do at that level at my library in Tacoma. Right. Right. Okay. So if I were to plan, like with a couple of my parent volunteers, to get a couple of vans together, how far in advance would we need to schedule to have, say, maybe like an hour-long tour of the facility and then let the kids hang out for another hour and kind of go their own way? There, there's a form on the website. <laughs> uh, there's a tour request. Okay. And um, under that, there is kind of, so there's just, I want a tour. And then there's kind of, I want to tour with an activity, and that's all in the same form. Okay. Um, I would say at least a couple of weeks okay. at this point, but kind of all of those details under, it's, it's, it's under one of the tabs across the top. Right. I don't remember which one. Um, but yeah, we do do things like that. Okay. So um, yeah, I would just fill out, fill out the, read, read all the details, fill out the form, and then staff will, will get back to you within a day or two usually to try to get that scheduled and work with you to the best of our ability. And is it better to kind of keep your group, uh, like should I aim it towards like my teen book club and advisory, kind of keep it like a teen, or can we kind of mix up, age, or is it better to keep it like an age group kind of thing? I'm not the exact person to ask on that particular okay. question, um, but my gut reaction is, yeah, if you can kind of group them by age, we can then better get an activity to that age group without completely boring the older ones or using right. the younger ones. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Great. Awesome. Okay. And we have, I think, time for a couple more. Last question. Who okay. are your private funders? 
I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> I can, I can oh, honestly yeah. say that. Um, there, there are some very generous folks with available funds in the Omaha area. That, I, that you know, and I, I could not thank them enough. Um, I, I know I have met some of our board members who I believe probably were also donors, um, but uh, that, that is not. I, I don't have a list, and even if I did, I'm not sure I could share that information. Good question. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. No, you're welcome. We're Thank going you. to take a short break.